Um, all right, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, I'm Darren Hamilton, Jefferson County Supervisor. Uh, this is our meeting for August 29th. We're almost out of August. Would you hand that to Marg, please? Um, all right, first item on the agenda is to acknowledge the minutes from the previous meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Drish, a second from Sandquist to approve the minutes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. All right, we'll next move to meet with our county engineer. Good morning, Dwayne. Good morning, supervisors. I hope everybody's doing well. We're back to basically routine work. We've got the contract rock wrapped up. Most of our construction projects are done. So Thomas is diligently wading through piles of paper to get all of our closeout documents in order so we can get everybody paid and close those books on those projects. Um, of course, the 32nd Street project is ongoing as they'll we'll suspend contract days. And they'll come in next spring, hopefully early summer, to do the asphalt work on that. We've got the shoulders cleaned up, and that should be open for traffic. We're still working on patching on Libertyville Road. We're almost done with our road painting. We did manage to round up some yellow and white paint. Good. I was going to ask how that was going. Uh, it's it's been a scramble. We didn't get a hundred percent, but hopefully we have enough to keep everything safe. Good. Um, and we should have. We may have another order coming in later this fall. I'm not going to hold my breath on. Hopefully, that. before it gets too cold. Uh, if, paint it, it. <laughs> if it gets too cold to paint it, we'll put it in one of our heated garages and keep it so that we have it for the winter, for next spring. Because yeah, we we decided it would be better to have it and store it then turn it down and then not be able to get it again next year. Uh, yeah, yeah. So at least, at least hopefully we have a leg up. Um, we do, we've got patching done up by Pekin School. So we'll be out of their way the rest of the school year. Can you refresh my memory on when you're doing something on March? Starting tomorrow. I thought it was soon. We Somebody are, asked me are, Saturday and I'm are, like, I think that's soon. We are wrapping up nutmeg today. Okay. In that looks nice. With, in conjunction with nutmeg, we also widened the approach to Salina Road from mm -hmm. nutmeg to make it a little more navigable for the truck semi-trucks, which is the whole purpose of that project. We'll get that finished up today and move over to large. We'll have the road closed. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to open just local traffic only. Okay. Um, we'll go through, pulverize the existing chip seal and soil subgrade and then blend in new aggregate mm -hmm. to stabilize that in preparation for next spring's stabilization and out of seal project. Okay. Got some more of our tank cars delivered last week. So we are all ready for beginning culvert replacements September 12th. I'm still waiting through our 2023 bridge inspection forms, um, coordinating to make sure that I haven't dropped anything, dropped the ball on any of those. We've got probably a dozen bridges looking forward the next a handful of years that are going to need either refurbished or replaced in order to make sure that we get them kind of in order of traffic counts so that we can handle them in the best manner possible. We've got, as you know, Libertyville Road is under design. We just found out that there used to be a mill along the creek down there. How many years ago was that? Uh, many years ago. Back in the late 1890s, early 1900s, <laughs> uh, and due to the records of that mill being there and no archaeological data on the site, <laughs> they think it may be where we want to put our bridge. So we have to have an archaeological investigation. So well, I'm sure you're on top of that. 
I'm, I'm excited. So who, Indiana Jones is coming to Jefferson County. So how did, who I'm, does that and where do you uh, go to there, find There out? are a handful of organizations, companies that specialize in that. Standard rates, I guess, are about $5,000 if it's not complex. Hopefully that's the limit of it. But yeah. we'll, we'll proceed and hope for the best. And I'll keep you posted on yeah, that. Yeah, do. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Oh, um, looking for, towards our chip seal project that I'm designing for next year. Um, we, we were looking at doing one-tenth from Pathway Road over the railroad tracks, mm -hmm. Brookville Road, and then Juniper from Libertyville Road South. And that, that one will be our variable road, depending on where where the bids come in, we'll probably shorten that project. We're hoping to get to 250. Um, with the current pricing, it'll probably be a mile short of that. We'll just have to see where prices come in. And then we've also got the hog operations and the honey wagons to consider on that. So that may, we may want to consider stabilization on mm -hmm. that once we get south of where the area in front of the core has been stabilized. Okay. And let's see. That was my grandson's second birthday today. Hey. Um, we got another one, second birthday tomorrow. <laughs> and that is dirt. Oh, I'm removing soil into the Packwood Greater Shed site to build the path for the new shed that's going up there. And then we're also looking out to 2024 or five. We're going to start investigating pricing on a new tandem dump truck and plow. Mm -hmm. Lead times on them right now are about 24 months. I'm sure. So if we want to get it within the 2025 fiscal year, we probably need to get the order, make the order, <clears throat> make the order here before. October or November. Mm -hmm. So budget-wise, it's out there, but we need to be making a decision on it. Okay. And I'll hopefully have some information for you on that next week. I'll be calling you on railroad crossings. Oh, so yeah. as did you, you, did as you listen to the I did. Is, so Darren and I were at the ISAC yeah. conference last week and I went to the engineer session on railroad crossings yes. and talked to the DOT. Mr. Yeah, and there's a new program, so I'll call you about that as soon as I find it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're on, on 205. Right. And there's More another new, problem. there's a different program yeah. that just came out from the feds, and I don't know, it's a grant, and I don't know much about it, but I was hoping maybe you could help find out. Yeah. It was interesting. Okay. That's Anything all else? I have, folks. All right. So we'll move on then to uh, discuss and consider resolution for step increases in secondary roads department. Um, this is, these are their annual. Yep. One year anniversary for right. uh, also. Brian Davis, yep. Ben Dunkelberger, uh, Jared Hellwig. Yep. And it's basically a 25 cent an hour raise. Ah, uh, actually, like, these guys. What is it? Oh, so whatever their next step oh, is. Oh, I see what it is. It right. depends, 30 ish. Yeah. Right. Ballpark. Right. And that 25 cents on. is um, yeah, yeah, yeah. something they already get because of the certification. That's not something added right. for, with this. So. Right. Okay. okay. Motion to approve. My question to you is do you have the money? Yes. Okay. We have the money. We. Oh, I, I did with, with us doing contract rock and, and the construction projects. I did double check our account balance to make sure that we were currently fluid. Sure. Thank you for doing and, that. Yeah. So, uh, gosh, you know, we've been spending a lot of money here lately. I better make sure we got money for the checks. Thank you. We're good. <clears throat> okay. I have a motion from Sandquist. Do I hear a second? I will second that, Darren, but I have an issue with the second sentence. Does that read correctly? 
What's that classification for secondary <coughs> road departments? Oh, I thought, I'm, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was way ahead of the next one. This is uh, yeah, I, sure, I second that. Okay. okay. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. All right. So you, we are going to uh, move on then. Okay, we're going to discuss and consider letter of dissent for the Heartland Greenway project. Uh, this is the uh, letter that's been in front of us. Um, there was uh, proposed changes by uh, Supervisor Sanquist. Yeah, I just went through it. Changes. It looks like we need a couple more changes. So okay. I think the Jefferson County Board of Supervisor it needs to be object instead of objects. Object. No, the board objects. Well, right. Supervisors. Supervisors but object. The board objects. The board. Thanks, Susie. Well, the second sentence. Um, That's the one you want to talk about. Yeah, our okay. primary opposition is that this project and is not a public utility that does not fit well. And I, you I mean would, the second pair. Yes, that's correct. Oh. Okay. Um, you know, I think we've sat on this long enough. We need to fix that sentence. Right. Today and sign this today. Okay. Yeah. It should just take a second. So, sure. so on that very first line, the Jefferson County Board of Supervisors objects to Navigator Heartland Greenway LLC's plans to build <coughs> and operate a carbon dioxide pipeline that will run through Jefferson County. So, do we want object or objects? If I may. Um, Jex refers to the board. If you said the Jefferson County supervisors object, it would be singular object. But now you said the board, and the board is one entity. So, Jex, so it's correct as yeah. it stands. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep that. And then is there a suggestion for changing this line? Our primary opposition is that this project and is not. Oh, yeah, that means we're just Oh, this. Uh, primary operate. Uh, let's just say our opposition. Our primary opposition. Is that this project is not a public utility. So take out the and. It just doesn't fit right now the way it sounds. Yeah. It's take not a public word. utility, period. So just taking out the word and. Unless we, okay, our primary opposition is that this project is not a public utility and should not receive eminent domains. Why don't we just say we are against using eminent domain since this is not a public utility? And that'd be an easier way to say it. Okay, you want to write that out? <laughs> Would you read your correction? Okay, just okay, get rid of that whole sentence and say we are against using eminent domain since this is not a public utility. Okay. Period. Can you see it? Yeah. No, that's good. Can we have Shannon type it? Yeah. I have to do it. It's <laughs> on my computer. Okay. I'm the one that typed We it. urge the IEB to deny the permit application that has been filed by Navigator Heartland Greenway LLC for this pipeline. And you guys it, can approve that as. Yeah, I was going to say. As which, amended, but yeah, we, we signed the one. And prohibited. Yeah, I, I, I motion that we approve this as corrected. Okay. Okay. okay, now there is no other corrections that need to be made to I, the I final. I don't think so. No. It's in this. Okay. So I'll, 
You made a motion, right? I did. I'll second yes. it. Um, and then Darren can sign it. Yeah. yeah, well, I'll and then make sure to get the auditor's office on there as well. All three of us will. So no, we can. We can okay. Sign. okay. All right. <clears throat> so I have a motion from Drish, a second from Sandquist to approve the letter of dissent as amended. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Trying to slow this down a little bit. We have uh, our architect is coming at uh, at uh, nine thirty. Nine thirty. Yeah, they couldn't get here before that. Um, it's, it's one of his. I got something. At, I got to leave by ten fifteen because I figured we'd be done by then. I didn't know he wasn't coming at um, nine thirty. Um, Mark has a question. If we, she could ask now or wait till public comments. Yeah. I'm simply asking um, when this is amended. Who's in charge of sending it to the IDP? Um, we will mail it from the auditor's office over here okay. up to the IUB. Once it's all signed, then can we'll. Can I do get that. a copy of the signed document? Yeah, we can leave a signed copy. What in we, the auditor's office. Why don't we go through the rest of the agenda, then you correct the letter and take a break then to 9.30. Okay, we'll do that. So It would um, have been nice to know that ahead of time. Yeah, well, I didn't get the email until this morning that it was going to be 9.30. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, that's what happened. So um, do we have any, uh, we'll move on then to make committee reports. Anything? Yeah, I um, had a 1015 meeting and it's a continual fight to not have vehicles laid up that they can't use. Parts, you know, they've ordered four new vehicles, though that might help. I believe they are 18 passenger vans. I was going to say, how long is it going to take them to get that? Yeah. No, I know. It's a state it's, of the. Yeah. Yeah. Understand that. Other than that, things are going as normal. We uh, we have an increase in veteran ridership, which I think is really good. That is good. It, in this county as well. Let me but, refresh our memories since we have a few minutes. People have to call sure. and reserve this ahead of time. What do you mean? To get a ride. To get a ride. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what, off the top of your head, what number they call? Um, no, I do not. I think it'd be a nice thing to get to Connor at some point. No hurry, but just so he can. Because uh, I think I was it, actually writing down anything. You know, you know, I think that's a really good idea, Dee, because Connor needs something to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's good for people to continually be reminded yeah, yeah. of some of these services available. In, in the fact that we have <laughs> services for veterans, you know, you see these ten fifteen, whether it's a little bitty car driving around or a big bus or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but the important part of that message will be that people need to call and yeah. get a reservation. Yeah. And I'm not sure. Yeah. I know it used to be, what, a couple of days? I mean, there's a little bit of a time. You know, that I don't know, but I will find out. <clears throat> I will find out 10 of the Texas meeting ends. Oh, awesome. Thank you. The, the phone number is probably not on the vehicles that are driving around. Probably not. That actually might be a good idea for those numbers on the vehicles, too. I, I think they are. Good idea. Okay. Um, D and I were both at the uh, ISAC fall conference. D, you want to start off with what you did? Unless you want a lot of a lot of notes read, I can say overview. This was one of the very good conferences, and part of the reason is because they've actually involved supervisors in planning the program. What a concept! <laughs> so the topics are quite relevant. And um, I attended a couple other, it was basically what engineers, auditors, supervisors, oh. treasurers, public health, well, basically everybody except sheriff and county attorneys that are elected officials, uh, mental health was there, they're not elected, but that they were there. So um, I attended some of the other 
topics to for some of the other disciplines, which is always good because the topics are pertinent across lines. Mm -hmm. As did I, I sat in on an HR um, <clears throat> portion of the, of the conference. I also sat in on uh, a meeting with um, a national representative of Mineco that covered the ARP, um, got oh, quite a few uh -huh. uh, instructions on that. We've been doing everything as we should up to this point. Um, where we use it as a uh, loss through uh, revenue loss shown through our books here, uh, which keeps us in compliance which, with both federal government and the state government. And what that means is 70% of the counties nationwide are, are taking that. Right, because they're Unless below, you're a huge county. Unless you're below uh, 200, if you're below 250,000 people, in your county and also below 10,000, 10, 10 million dollars as a recipient, uh, you can take it all as we have as a revenue loss because all the money is gonna be spent back out of that uh, coming up. So, yeah. and um, yeah, the final day was pretty slow. There wasn't a whole lot of people around there that uh, it was worth at least staying for it. So, um, but uh, yeah, that was in Des Moines at the, uh, it's not Heidi Hall. Iowa it's Events Center. The, uh, the Iowa Events Center, which <laughs> is connected to Heidi Hall, which is all part of the Wells Fargo complex in the downtown area. It used to be the Memorial, Veterans Memorial Stadium that's been converted into this. So. Um, it was it was good it was a good trip well worth the time to spend over there and, and learn more about uh, what's going on not only with us but with other counties across the state and that was the only meeting I had this last week so um, do we have any public comments Can I get a copy of that uh, letter once you guys fix it? Once I get it fixed, yeah. Okay. Um, should I, do you think I should ask them in the auditor's office for it or? He can probably have it. I can, quick. well, yeah. Um, can we reconvene when Mike gets here, if he gets here early though? I don't know if he will. Yeah, <laughs> um, we can reconvene when we, we do that. I'll ask for a uh, short intermission now to uh, wait for that. Our architects from Iowa City have told us they're gonna be here at about 9.30 this morning to discuss where we're at with the plans for uh, the north entryway and for the restroom downstairs that's going to be added to the building here. So um, I would take a motion to um, go into a brief recess till 9.30. So moved. Second. All right, I have a motion from Grish, a second from Sanquist to go into a brief recess. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Um, we will go ahead and do that. We'll return. All right. Good morning. It is now 930. We will go ahead and, and resume our meeting. Um, we have with us uh, Lena, Lena from Horizon Architecture, who is going to talk to us a little bit about the North Door project and the basement restroom yeah. project. Welcome. Well, thank you. So I have two sets of fans printed out on roll one real quick, just so I can point while I talk. The first one that I have up is the North Entry project. So we're gonna take out the existing door that's there, um, the concrete stoop and the limestone stoop, and then remove and retain that flower pot bollard out there. Sorry. Just okay. demolishing it up on that north side. Um, Bart, you want to come sit? 
These should be the uh, specifications. Yeah, so we put them on sheets so that we didn't have to have a um, project manual and just kind of make it a little bit easier. Um, I won't go through all of them, but um, existing conditions, concrete, um, demolition, aluminum storefront for the door, and then an alternate for the window above the door as well. Um, putting in the electrical for the key card access, um, sealing the joints, um, extra concrete work for the new stoop and the but we have a baller place in there because we weren't entirely sure if you were going to have two flower pots or two ballers. So we have them both in there. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what else is in here. The door, the room on the storefront. Door hardware, that's always like a long one. And the glazing on there. And then lastly, just the painting. <laughs> And any painting of the frame and anything else. Okay. Okay, so then on this north entry, we have a new cross footing. Oh, sorry, new cross footing that goes down, new stoop on top of it. So, approximately how big is that? Um, we have it seven and a half feet by almost four feet, and it's going to go down at least 42 inches. So that's almost four feet, but not quite. So it should be the extents of what it is now coming up against. There's this knee wall out there by that door that goes down. So we're not gonna go past that except for the railing. But the concrete shouldn't go beyond that. The new concrete and steps. How many steps will there be? Uh, two steps down to grade one of the stoop. Okay. And and so we're gonna have a freestanding railing here so that we're not tying into the um, existing wall. We don't wanna break into that. Right. And because we're not gonna put a um, door ax, uh, we're gonna have a key card, but we're not gonna have an ADA push on there anymore. So it made more sense to not disrupt the facade of the building as much as possible. New door, we're changing it to a single door with a side light instead of a double door. And then an alternate to replace the upper window as well. Right, and, and the reason the alternate is in there is we're unsure of, of uh, how new the window is up there and whether it's a higher efficiency window or not. So yeah, to get that was put in there and then it would be an alternate bid. If we want it, we can keep it. If we don't, it'll be removed from the total bid package. So then this final sheet is just showing um, the details for the storefront, an ADA threshold, a detail for the bollard, um, and then just glazing and then the door schedules. So there won't be the push to automatically open the door? There will not be. There will be the key card access because of the two steps up from grade, um, determined that the ADA accessible entry would be the south entry up here on the front. Mm -hmm. Right, but the north reality north. is we still have a lot of people that use that side. Is it possible to put the ADA push on there? Yeah, it's a possibility. It just, that you it just encourages people that are... Then they complain about the step. Yeah. Well, the steps will at least be better. I'm just saying people are going to use it anyway, and it's an accident waiting to happen, perhaps. Something to think about. Well, we could put it in as an alternate bid, okay. I would think. I mean, I I just, you know, people, I think you're right. We shouldn't rule it out yet. Yeah, people are not realistically going to. I know we want to educate them to use the south side, mm -hmm. but practice is change is difficult. And a lot of people will still use that door who should go to the south side. Yeah, you know, on a personal basis, I'm using the south side now, and it is very, except for this morning, <laughs> very compatible. When it's open, it's not locked. Right. Okay. No, I mean, it's yeah, just a yeah. thought. Yeah. I don't have a strong opinion on it. I just would hate to see somebody fall out there trying to open the door when they should be going around. Well, that's, that's 
the reason for the larger landing than what we have. Yeah. You know, the door yeah. won't open on them. And yeah, I'm all just of that. this. And, and then there's people like me that carry a lot of things into the building. <laughs> so this That's will be the D edition. Yes. To, to the door. The, the, the Sandquist edition. Yeah. Sand I have also yeah. seen attorneys carry a lot of things in there. Yes. It's hard to hold that cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> So here is um, our preliminary budget for both of them. The north entry is on the bottom and yellow and the bathroom on the top. And um, sorry, I give them a copy so I don't remember. It comes out to about $25,000 for the north entry. Um, we haven't updated the NEP um, number in there yet. So that would include the ADA um, push button from before, but it does not include the key card access that we added in later. Right. So that number still needs to be updated, but the rest of it we went through last week and updated it for RS means. And again, this is just preliminary. The contractor would get a, a better estimate um, for the times and for their business. Any questions on the line items or if I um, accidentally omitted anything? Um, I think no, this is I very concise. Yeah, for I the don't North see Virginia. anything that you've missed. And again, we'll add that uh, push button. Yeah, back in there. That's the back in there. And um, all right. Yeah. So we want to move on to the bathroom re renovations. Okay. Can I ask a question about the hand dryers and the bathrooms? Yeah, do you want to do that now or do you want me to present the bathrooms? Oh, we can do that in the bathrooms. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that under the portion of it. <laughs> uh, I haven't got to really stay that way. That's my name. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> so the second project is the bathroom um, upgrade. Okay. And so we're going to demo out all of the partitions and the units in there and the sinks as well. Leave the baby changing um, stations. They may have to be removed and reinstalled. I understand now that they've been mounted to the wall as they should have mm -hmm. been. And then we're also going to remove the drywall uh, fur outs that are in both the men's and women's. Men's on this side, women's around this corner. And it kind of ends right where the door stops just to assess the brick behind it. We're not sure. Um, on the men's side, it looks pretty damaged underneath, but the water leaking in and the cove of the tile kind of deteriorating. Um, and so we assume the women's would probably be the same, especially on this back wall, but we're not quite sure along this. Um, I think this is the east side. Right. Yeah. That would be an interior yeah. wall at that point. Yeah. Is that the east wall? And then we're going to put in a new bathroom over here, an ADA bathroom. So taking out the water fountain and taking out the closets here, we want to leave the fire extinguisher cabinet where it is existing right now. So try not to mess with that. Um, and I think that's it for... Are you going to have doors here? Are they going to be open like some of the newer... We're going to leave the doors that are there. So this will be the only ADA compliant bathroom? Yes. Yeah. Which is better than we have now because mm -hmm. we don't. No, and I like it because it's close. No, I can address that. You don't. So it'll be a single user ADA bathroom. That's okay. Right. Okay. Probably signed as a family yeah. restroom. Um, a couple of things that have been brought up to me since we had our little walkthrough. Uh, the... Uh, Stainless steel paper towel dispensers, dispensers that are currently in the walls down there are in pretty bad disrepair. Okay. Um, we'd like to see if those could be replaced with a similar unit that fits into that same size. Um, and then also a uh, baby changing table for the um, family restroom, it was suggested that we have a changing table that accommodates not only 
infants and toddlers, but children that are handicapped okay. that are a larger. Um, so it would need to have uh, more weight, could handle more weight than um, what some of the plastic ones that you see in restrooms around. That way it makes it more yeah, handicap friendly, especially with parents that have children that are handicapped and need you know that kind of attention. Yeah. So yeah. that was brought up by our public health nurse. Yeah, a question about the so are we um the, the, where the water hydrant was? Are we going to put out a water hydrant where you can actually fill bottles of water with? Uh, the water fountain? Yes. Um we just purchased that water fountain here two years ago. Uh, and put it in. But now would be the time to move forward if we need to. I suppose instead of reusing the one we had and saving some money, we can spend some extra money and get one that fills water bottles. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking, you know, the intent, of, my intent with the COVID money is to spend it on something that would have helped during COVID. Mm -hmm. I think that would help during COVID. Let's see what, well, what, all just see what the cost is. Shut down though, during COVID. If you yeah, I know that. I know that. So there's so many places that have added that feature. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's just, a whole. You know, it would be a purchase a whole new fountain. Uh -huh. So we can see how much it is. Price yeah, I think we can at least price out. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't see any problem yeah. with pricing it. I just, I had not. Thought of that when <laughs> looking at this, and just like I would like everything to be touchless in the bathroom. Yes, they, they, they will be. They will and be. Speaking of which, hand dryers. Yeah. So, is it a noisy one? Is it a you know? There's different kinds, and some of them are so noisy, people don't use them because it's like. Rah, rah. And in those those existing restrooms, that that would really echo, yeah, badly. So, what are our options for dryers? There's a lot of options. I think we just stuck the Dyson hand dryer, one that um, mounts to the wall and goes down and not one that you stick your hands in. Um, and we looked more at the sanitary options, but we did not look at noise. So we can, I'm not I sure what the decibel noise also. The on there. Okay. And what would those ones like this cost? Those are um, almost, I think, if, they're really like one expensive. and a half times more, almost two times more as expensive than the ones that... Are those more sanitary than the others? Mm -hmm. We didn't find too much of a difference. We did find that the um, ones that mounted on the wall were more sanitary because they don't trap the water in like a basin is kind of how I was, it was explained. I think it'd be nice if we got, if, if you know which ones are the sanitary ones to get those. So focus on the both sanitary and noise control. I mean, in an ideal world, and we know we don't live in an ideal yeah. world, but give us options. Okay, I'm not sure what we expect, um, how that compares with the I, noise bombs, but I we'll think look back at it again. Probably sanitary would be highly rated, but I, I just know probably. there's some places that they are so noisy. I mean, like even little kids scream. <laughs> they do. I, yeah, mean, no, I believe you. It's, yeah, it scares them. Yeah. So okay. I would hate to get one that noisy. We'll look at both and then compare them um, to the price as well. And we will st still have paper, paper. No, paper I know. option. Which is good. As well. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions on what we're demoing out of the bathroom? No. no. Good job. Okay. We'll put it in a little bit back. Oh, I forgot. It's next. There's about six pages in here. <laughs> um, so demoing out everything. Um, a new door for the new bath, new bathroom, keeping the old doors, um, rough carpentry for furring out the walls, sealing all the joints in there, um, door hardware, gypsum boards. So we're replacing the walls that we're tearing out. We're just building them back in there, making them more efficient and making sure there's nothing going on behind the walls. So new gypsum board in there. New tiling, um, if we have to replace the tile or in any of the broken pieces on the floor or in the code base. And then also um, now the code is requiring us to go up 48 inches with tile wainscot on the wall, 
along the wall so it's easily cleanable and sanitary so that mm -hmm. you don't get mold on the jet board or the brick. Um, and then having a vinyl wall base, or not vinyl wall, sorry, resilient base, so repairing the cove base in the tile if needed, and then adding new cove base in the new restroom where it's not currently. Um, and then painting where necessary on the new jet board. And then, sorry, we you going to say that? Um, all of the toilet compartments and toilet accessories, so like the hand dryer, um, toilet paper holders, all everything the there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, all in here. Kind of stuff. Let's see. For hand dryer, we use the Dyson um, Arable right. V or Equal. Yeah. Um, plastic finish and mounting height at 88 yeah. standards. And I've seen those Vs. They're, they're a rectangular shape like this and then the bottom of these oh, like yeah. this and then you stick your hands yeah. sure. just underneath it versus the slide down, put your hands down yeah, inside. And, and the only thing that I see that interests me is the UV light that comes out with some of those uh, dryers. Well, I haven't seen one of those. I, I don't have much experience with those, but I have seen them and they um, the UV light is supposed to help keep the germs down because yeah. the UV can You're right it's used yeah. to to kill to kill more germs yeah, I haven't seen more germs that I have seen you're watching your they use it properly. they use UV <laughs> in a lot of uh, waste treatment plants they have yeah. UV yeah. treatment out here at this plant the, that's my account in Kelowna has those in the restrooms I'm not sure what the cost difference is on those but I can add it to the right but those yeah. ones that well. you're currently describing are a nice one and I don't yeah. think they're very loud no, the, the they, ones that are loud are the ones that are like around, like they're yeah, called so Excel they're or whatever. Those things are, yeah, and yeah, I even made the comment on that. They blow so hard, water goes everywhere, and then they are very, very noisy, like you were talking mm -hmm. about. So, all right. So, these two plans are the same on the outside, but they're showing uh, this one's showing the units, and then this is just showing the finishes. So um, for the two bathrooms, we're putting back in the same new fixtures in the same place, but they're gonna be touchless, new partitions and rebuilding these walls here. Um, we will be able to get a circle uh, turn radius for ADA um, wheelchair accessibility, but there's not an ADA compartment. That's why we need the um, new restroom. So this all, I think I see it right there. It has a sink in it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah, that's toilet. Yeah. toilet with fab bars, Sorry. Yeah. Okay. a new sink, a uh, changing table, which will address that to be a little larger or heavier, um, fire extinguisher cabinet staying in the same location, and then relocating the existing water fountain to this wall here, um, since we're already going through plumbing in that area. Um, these baby changing stations are staying in place, and then um, the sinks that are going there are just going to be wall mounted units. They're not going to have the full Counter. countertop. Okay. Plus, there'll be new light fixtures above them um, in both restrooms. Yes. Uh, updated, you know, um, one and number two, more efficient with the bulbs that can be put into them. <laughs> LED fixtures all throughout. Yeah. Thank you. So. And then also we have called out here is that we're going to take out the vent exhaust fans that are in there and reglaze those windows and take the exhaust fan. Um, I think the plan right now, sorry, we haven't gotten updated MEP drawing, so I haven't seen them yet. But most recently, to my knowledge, the plan was to take um, everything out one side and have the women's come across to the men's and go out there. I'm not sure if that has been updated um, since the last time we spoke or since they came here last Tuesday. This is right. probably a dumb question that I'm gonna ask anyway. So is all this gonna help the odor in the bathrooms from the- yes. Yeah, hopefully. Because yeah. with the new exhaust fan, I'll be able to pull out more air and- Well, be more she's air. talking about the floor drains that are in the bathrooms right now don't have a back flap on them and what happens is the water oh. evaporates out of them and unless you pour a cup of water down them once a month or so then you get sewer gas smell that comes back up in okay um, I didn't know which is it's a huge problem right okay <laughs>
I don't know if I don't think the mechanical it'll help no, them more I out, but it's not talk gonna to the guys mechanical that. about that when they I think if it's action. possible to correct that it would be quite helpful because it's pretty unpleasant down there sometimes and it's sewer gas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any question about the sink? Is there still only going to be one sink in each bathroom? Yes. Yes. Sometimes you have to stand and wait. Yeah, there's really not enough room to put two sinks in each one. Either be two sinks and two stalls. But... You know, at the at the hospital, they, their bath and public restroom across from check-in. This goes all the way this way for a handicap stall. Mm -hmm. It's still not quite wide enough because we need a five foot by uh -huh. um, four foot six area. Mm -hmm. um, shown dash around here to yeah. get that handicap toilet. So because okay. wouldn't this be about nine foot? Yeah, but it's not wide enough this way. We'd have to remove one of the So pictures. if we made it wide enough and only had two stalls, would there be room? There'd be room for another sink, is what I'm saying. Yeah. If you would take this and go this way, remove this, make a second sink with the Abbey. I don't know. I think for code, we have to keep all the fixtures that are currently oh, existing. Okay. 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 I'm yeah. not 100% sure, but I, yeah, I think that's why we have all of That's those. okay. You're the who says. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're just asking. No, you're the good question. We know there's reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Sewer gas. Do you think yeah. Maybe not that we'll remember it check. tomorrow. But, you know. Is there a drain in each bathroom? There's a drain in each bathroom on the floor, plus there's a drain out in the lobby area down there as well. And all three of them have to have water poured into them at least once a month. You know. Yeah, usually there's a trap or a or something that keeps and I, we, a, we've had the same problem at the law center, but I didn't know if that needs to be checked. <coughs> Correct. Yeah. Trap is there to keep the smell coming if it's that bad. Yeah. So. There's there's various ways of doing that. There's pouring water down in on a regular basis. Dave's here does that mm -hmm. a lot. Um, there's you can pour water down it and then use vegetable oil about a half a cup of vegetable oil or a quarter cup, pour it on top of the water after it's done, it holds down the amount of evaporation that goes on, but then it starts gumming up the whole works. Yeah. Later, um, most places like my home, we built it so that there's uh, back flaps in them, as well as a couple different uh, uh, drops. Mm -hmm. um, because it's the it's the drop underneath that holds the water, water to keep yeah. the gas from coming back. Mm -hmm. So there's there's different ways to to look at that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, right now we're just doing the old pour the water down the <laughs> with red arrows. Maybe it needs if you're doing all this down with the drafts and checks to see how many drops are in it, or even if. If there yeah. is a drop. <laughs> well, yeah, it, I'm sure there is a drop because if you fill them, then the gas goes away for a while. Okay, so this is something to discuss. So we don't take any action. No, on. we're not taking okay. any action on this other than just getting our suggestions back to the architects. Got it. Thanks. Um, Good job. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Timeline again with the uh, plans before we can go out for bids for it or... So these are issued for bid. Um, so you can take these two plans and um, go and see which contractors. You said you had some local ones that you were going to reach out to. Well, yeah, we're going. We're going to need to advertise everything. Yeah. You know, because we'll be over the hundred and thirty-nine thousand threshold, so we will have to take bids because we'll try to bid both at the same time. It may not be the same contractor that does both of them, but the total amount for the project is going to be high enough that we have to have a whole public bid process okay. in order to do it. Um, but, uh, um, so then the MEP drawings should be finishing um, today. And then we, should, I think we're promised to overnight them to you within the next two days. Um, mm -hmm. Also issued for bid. So I don't, is there anything else that you would need? From, we would update, they're not stamped, of course. So they're not ready for construction um, just to get just back. some suggestions of how an ad should be written for okay. um, putting it out for bid. 
but that would be helpful to us as well because we'll have to get that into our two um, papers of record here in the county, the, the union and then also the clarion plainsman, clarion plainsman's a weekly. You so. might want to put that on um, the radio's website too. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll advertise it in all the usual places that we can. And then we'll have a deadline for when bids are going to need to come in that uh, contractors need to adhere to. We aren't going to take any bids after that particular point in time. Um, we've had that happen previously um, where we put out for bids and we've gotten three or four bids and then a contractor comes in the next day after the bids were due or they're due on Friday, they bring it in on Monday and still get mad because they couldn't be included in the bidding process. So, all right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Let us know if you guys have any other questions, and I will pull these up for you. Sure, Thanks. appreciate that. All right, um, we go on now to allow claims and approve reports. So moved. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Sandquist to second from Grish. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Motion carries. Uh, that concludes everything we have. Motion to adjourn. For this second. Meeting. I have a motion from Sandquist and a second from Grish to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody, for uh, staying with us through the brief period of time we had for uh, waiting on the architect. So, yes, thank you. appreciate Sorry, you joining us. Yeah.